Hello, we are back. We are back to do another day of our wonderful book club. We are reading this fabulous book. It is um, our book club's name is Be Holy for I Am Holy. And we need to read, read, read holy things. Be holier every day. And our um, book we are reading is Anne Catherine Emmerich and her beautiful vision she has. She was beautified, beautified, beautified. and four by Pope St. John Paul II. And so her um, visions were approved by the Catholic Church, right? Right. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, they went through each uh, word of all her writings. Um, with a fine tooth comb, it's historically correct and not opposed to doctrine. And what Jeanette was talking about, holy um, reading, um, how it helps you get holy, Padre Pio said, the harm that comes to souls from the lack of reading holy books makes me shudder. What power spiritual reading has to lead to a change, of course and to make even worldly people enter into the way of perfection. St. Padre Pio, one of Jeanette's very favorites. Yes, I love Padre Pio. I got to start doing a chaplet. I kind of stopped doing it. I need to start doing it again. It's very short, guys. It's like five minutes. Oh, very wow. short. It's a very short chaplet. Is it? That's all it is right there. Oh. It's five minutes. It's time. it's a nine the nine yes. nine novena one two three four five five ten fifteen that's it fifteen oh, prayers 15. guys and in between oh. you say something I have it written down I forgot it it's memorized uh -huh. it's not memorized but anyway and it helps it helps heal your personal intentions and um he will help heal others you are praying through him to God you're not praying to him. You're asking him to help you with, you know, talk to God a little more. Mm -hmm. As we talk to him directly, we ask him to help us as well talk to him because he's there right next to him in heaven. Right? So right. He, he can get closer to him while he's having dinner. He can, he can uh, talk to them. Just like we're <laughs> learning in our guardian angel, our opus angelorum yes. about, um, in mass, when they say, holy, holy, like I just look up and I imagine all the angels every time we do the holy, 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 you know, so. Yeah. So right now we're going, we're still traveling, guys, with Jesus on the way to get the baptism. He's still not there, guys. It's, it's, it's been a long journey. I didn't know about this. You know, no. we just automatically in the Bible just see. Wow, Jesus got baptized, you know, in the Jordan by John. But we didn't see in the Bible this part that Anne Catherine Emmerich saw, which is the vision part, which is her visions of the travels and the people he along the way spoke. Rose, I hope it's still taping. Yeah. I, yeah, you no, froze. Anything? You oh, froze. So you didn't hear anything I said. No, all I heard was they're still traveling, and then, then you froze. I kind of said um, that he's picking up people along the way as he's going to the baptism, and he's planting seeds, like you like to say, that he plants those seeds along the way, and he gathers them and brings them to the baptism. Right. And... Um, we where he sends them this. ahead. Yes, we didn't know this because it's not in the Bible. There's so much that's not in the Bible. And thank, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful gift of being able to see this through another blessed person's visions. It's helped me so much. Had. Yeah, it's helped me so much in my um, rosary um, imaging when I image uh my rosary as i'm doing it i can put myself there because of this and that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to unite 
with Christ. And when we do that, when we image being in the, the 20 mysteries of the rosary, we um, are imaging are uniting with God. And what happens before those things happen? The more we do that, the more we become like him. And that's our goal, right? So anyway. Amen. That is our goal. So Jesus journeys with Lazarus to the place of baptism. And this, I believe, is the last one before we are there, close to it. The entertainment over Jesus rested a while and then started with Lazarus toward Jericho to the place of baptism. One of Lazarus' servants went on ahead with a lighted torch, and it was night. After walking for about half an hour, they reached an inn belonging to Lazarus where at a late latter period, the disciples often stop. This inn must not be confounded with that other of which I have often made mention and at which also the disciples frequently put up. That one was farther up in an opposite direction. The hall in which Jesus and Mary were received by Lazarus on their arrival at the house was the same in which Jesus was stopping and teaching before the resurrection of Lazarus when Magdalene went to meet him. On arriving at the inn, Jesus removed his sandals and went barefoot. Lazarus, touched with compassion, begged him in consideration of the rough stony roads not to do so. But Jesus gravely replied, let it be thus. I know what is behoveth me to do. And so they entered into the wilderness, the desert broken up by narrow chasms, stretched out before them a distance of 500, of five hours toward Jericho. Then came the fruitful vale of Jericho, also in interpersed by wild tracks, about two hours in breath, whence to John's place of baptism was a journey of another two hours. Jesus walked more quickly than Lazarus and was often an hour ahead of him. A multitude among them, some publicans, whom Jesus had sent from Galilee to the baptism were now on the return journey. They passed Jesus in the desert, though at some distance on their way back to Bethania. And Jesus stopped nowhere. He passed Jericho on his left and a couple of other places on the way, but paused at none. Lazarus's friends Nicodemus, Simeon's son, and John Mark had spoken but little with Jesus. But to one another, they were constantly interchanging words of admiration at his behavior, his wisdom, his human, yes, even his personal attractions. In his absence, or when walking behind him, they said to one another, what a man. <laughs> there was never before such a one. There never again will be another like him. How earnest, how mild, how wise, how discerning, and yet how simple. But I cannot perfectly comprehend his words, though I accept them with the thought. He said it. One cannot look him in the face, for he seems to read one's thoughts. Look at his figure, how majestic in bearing, how swiftly he moves, and yet no undignified haste. Whoever walked wow. like him, I know, how quickly he journeys from place to place and yet shows no signs of weariness. He is always ready to start again for hours. What a man he has turned out to be. Then they went on to speak of his childhood, his teaching in the temple, 
and referred to the dangers attendant on his first voyage when he aided the sailors, but not one of them dreamed that he was speaking of the son of God. They saw that he was greater than all other men. They honored him and stood in awe of him. Still, he was to them only a man, though indeed a man full of progenies, pro, progen, progeny, prodigy, prodigies, yeah, prodigy, sorry. Obed of Jerusalem was an aged man, a fraternal nephew of the husband of old Anna, the prophetess. He was a pious man, one of those so-called elders at the temple, a temple of the Sanhedrin. He was one of the secret disciples of Jesus, and as long as he lived, lent assistance to the community. So, yeah, the next one is John preaching and baptizing, and John leaves the desert, talks a little bit about John. But wow. And it's really long because we couldn't add it on to this one. It's really long. Right. But yeah. this one was kind of short, which is good. Yeah, because don't you have somewhere you have to go or something? Monday is the day I go to church to do my um, Bible study. And then I also today I have to pray the rosary. So I got to be there a little earlier. But I, I don't have to leave till about 815. So I'm good. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's this <laughs> oh i just you know me i gotta do something with my hands <laughs> <laughs> um here i go <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny um so i think this is uh interesting the entertainment is over i think that's an interesting way to start uh this little um reading the entertainment over Jesus, He's not ready not to get the, to business. Well, I thought that's what it meant at first, but then, um, then I realized that we're talking about Jesus. So this whole little thing is all about how amazing he is, you know. Yeah. And uh, Jeanette was just telling me about someone that she watched and she had sent to everyone in Messenger. I'll have to find it and share it for you guys. Um, but how amazing God is and how you could not, how could you not think there's a God? What are you nuts? Oh my gosh. So, I am going to write down every word, word per word and have it in my purse for when yeah. somebody questions God, I'll say, hold on, hold on. I heard something. Someone said that really affected me. I'm going to read it to you. Yeah, and that Jeanette will get them me. to go. Wow. Yeah, Jeanette just told me she sent it to me in uh, Messenger. I'm like, oh, I want to go watch it because she said everyone in her uh, uh, friend groups that she sent it to were like, oh, my gosh. Wow, wow, wow. So everybody's like amazed. And uh, we were talking about all the tattoos on his face. And I said, well, when people face evil, they they know God. Suddenly you wake up and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is evil. And you know what God is from that. OK, yeah. so. The entertainment over Jesus rested a while and then started with Lazarus toward Jericho to the place of baptism. So see, you could look at it two ways, the way it was saying that. So one of Lazarus' servants went on ahead with a lighted torch for it was night. So they were like lighting the way, I guess. After walking for about half an hour, they reached the inn belonging to Lazarus. So here we find out Lazarus owns an inn. How about that, Jeanette? Yeah, the guy owned like the like like a whole city or a whole town. Yeah, he, in it. yeah, he was so rich. Um, and then the, and then she says, and at a later period, uh, the disciples often stop there. But she's saying, don't confuse this in with another one, which she talked about there where they went often. Um, it was in an opposite direction. Someday I want to take all of the maps and map day to day where they are, put a little pin and then, you know, and then add a link to this where people can go and look because, cool. yeah, I want to do that. Uh, even though that book that I got is by a um, more Protestant um, uh, 
publishing company, Rose Publishing, which was bought by another one, another Protestant one. It doesn't matter because what they're doing is they're just going by what's in the Bible. So they're they're not incorrect. So um, that's why I'm using it because I like how it does the then and now. You know, the one that I showed on a live yeah. about then and now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to tape that and put it on YouTube. But anyway, so... Um, uh, so here they were, um, it, the hall in which Jesus and Mary were received by Lazarus on their arrival at his house was the same inn which Jesus was stopping and teaching before the resurrection of Lazarus when Magdalene went to meet him. You see, that's what makes her writing so confusing. She goes back and forth in time and she doesn't, uh, note that, you know, so it's like, must have had ADD like us. <laughs> right you know how we go back and forth and we go to different subjects and we're like okay finish what you were saying first <laughs> yeah well listen before i went to nursing school i knew something even though i knew i had a photographic memory i knew i had a problem with uh my attention span and so i i you know my kids were little were like two and uh like what were they six and two and I was I would think about them all day and I was like I can't do that I got to focus and I've been telling my daughter that because even though she got all her prerequisites done when she starts that you got to be focused so anyway so yeah um that's what makes her writing a little confusing so um on arriving at the inn Jesus removed his sandals and went barefoot I love that. That's why I love my moccasins. My mo my my daughter's like, well, you know, they're out of style, right? I was like, you know, I don't really care about style at this point oh, in my life, Elizabeth. Me. Yeah. yeah. She, no. She's like, I, I was like, Elizabeth, the reason I like these moccasins, I wore them in my 20s, which they were fine back then for style. But I don't care about style. I'm doing for my own you know, I, I, I'm not 20 something years old where I am worried about my little friends thinking like these weird we make things. our own style, these <laughs> young people. It's like style. I mean, who says what style anyway, anyway. So here's Jesus making his own style going barefoot. I like barefoot because you're closer to the earth. In fact, there's a guy on YouTube that talks about because our, our skin never touches the earth and the soil that we are, we, uh, something about energy from the soil. And I don't know if it's new age or whatever, but I'm like, it's true. And then he talks about, he also yes. talks, yes, you need he also to talks touch, about, you need to touch the grass because touching the grass with your bare feet and walking on it and staying there for like, 30 minutes of walking on, on really nice plush grass and the earth, yeah. it lowers your blood pressure. It does all these things. That's what he was saying. Body. So even though it might sound new agey, there's some real um, physiological changes that take place. So just it's like nature. what Jeanette said. Mm -hmm. It's nature. Right. So yeah, unfortunately we were talking about how you can make idols of your children. You people have made idols of the earth with Gaia and ooh, ooh. you know, we're not talking about that. We're talking about physiological changes. So anyway, so Lazarus touched with compassion. He all of a sudden, you know, begs him in consideration of the rough stony roads not to do so. He's telling Jesus, don't go barefoot. I'm worried, you know, I don't want you to get a cut foot. He's he's concerned about Jesus's any pain he might have. But Jesus gravely replied, let it be thus. I know what he, it, what it behooveth me to do. You know, my daughter will ask me, do you think I should do this? Do you think I should do that? I said, well, I look at it this way because of this. But, you know, you have to go by your own. Because my mother would always tell me why she was right and I was wrong. And I don't, I want Elizabeth to use her own intuition and not to be dependent on me and all her girlfriends. I said, you know, you have to be careful when you ask advice. In fact, I said, your father used to say to me, um, collect three different kind of people's advice and then make your own decision. I said, so that's what your dad used to say to me. And I agree with that. So anyway, 
So um, he, he said, I know what behooveth me to do. And so they entered into the wilderness. You know, Jesus knew what he was doing, even though the disciples didn't quite understand these things. So the, the desert broken up by narrow chasms stretched out before them five hours toward Jericho. So, you know, however many miles it takes to uh, walk uh, five hours is how many miles it is. Then they came to the fruitful Vale of Jericho. We need this in our map, Kim. Also interspersed by wild tracks, two hours in, in breath. Again, however long it takes to walk. Whence John, whence John's place of baptism was a journey of another two hours. Jesus walked more quickly than Lazarus, and it was often an hour ahead of him. A multitude among them, some publicans whom Jesus had sent from Galilee to the baptism, now on their return journey. So remember, he sent people ahead. And now they're they're still walking there, but it doesn't make their baptism any less powerful, even though um, he blessed the waters because on the other side, there's no time. So people that got baptized ahead of him in the water are just as blessed because, you know, he went thereafter and there's no time on the other side. So remember, he needs, uh, not he needs, but he often uses whether it's mud to heal eyes or water to baptize. Um, that's why we love Lords and this and that, because he uses things from the earth. Um, and it's not necessarily like a mineral or whatever. Like people think that there are certain things and they've tested. Go ahead. Yeah. And he doesn't really have to do it. No, he doesn't have to do it. He does it. Because we need more of a seeing, seeing it done. Because he can just think it and he can cure somebody. Right. But right. he does it because he because Teaching. we need that verification of what he's doing for our own eyes. Because he's, we have to see to believe, like Thomas, unfortunately. <laughs> he's doing what all good teachers do. They, they um, illustrate it for you exactly. so he's he's illustrating for us he's drawing it for us to show us so and that's what good teachers do they simplify things and that's what they call them they say he's all these wonderful things but yet simple good teachers simplify things so and and he had to still hide what he was saying to us where we're still unpacking this living word right so exactly. the desert broken up, stretched before the, okay, so we just talked about that. Um, and uh, they passed Jesus in the desert, though some at a distance. Jesus stopped nowhere. He just kept going. He was plowing through. He passed Jericho on his left and a couple of other places, but stopped at none. He's on a mission. Lazarus's friend, again, here we go with the relationships, Nicodemus who is Simeon's son, right, Jeanette? Yes. And John Mark, who Jeanette uh, explains to us, means Mark, who wrote the book of Mark. So, and John Mark had spoken but little with Jesus. But to another, they were constantly interchanging words of admiration. And here's where I just love his wisdom, his, his human, yes, even in his personal attractions, like they're looking at how attractive he is. What a man they're saying. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're walking behind him and like, what a man. Like they were like, how good looking is he? Because think about it. It's like all of those um, celebrities that human beings idolize. They have a special um, charisma and instead of using it, well, not all, I yeah. think, you know, and some of them, instead of using it to spread the good news, they're using it to get famous and self-idolized, but smart ones will use it to help spread the word of God. Yes, because um, if you think about it, there's a, there's a few places in the Bible, I don't know exactly where they are yet, but um, I'm not that good that I can just... I wish I I will one day get there, Lord. That's it's very big. For wisdom to it's be a lot able of work. to just 
2000. Bring, bring out what the readings and be able to know it in my head, the reading number and name. But anyway, um, it says that he's really not that attractive. He was not really a very attractive man. But really, what? Yeah, he wasn't. But because probably I think he was made that way by God, of course, so he wouldn't draw attention to his looks. Unlike Mary, Mary was very beautiful, according to what I've read. So um, anyway, um, but when you meet somebody and you get to listen to them and you start seeing them not by what their looks are, but by their hearts. And That's oh, what I try to tell people. Elizabeth. I know so many people like that, that are not like that attractive really at first sight because, you know, we got eyes, we see it. But, oh, my gosh, when you start talking to them and they start becoming your friends and everything, they're just gorgeous. They're just beautiful. You That's know, what I um, tell Elizabeth. I'm like, stop looking at if someone doesn't have a wash uh, a washboard yeah. belly like you. Because we all yeah. get old and ugly. I hate to tell yeah, you. I've I'm met, I've met I'm people ugly. in the past. I've met people in the past. And they're not that great looking, but oh my gosh, they were so amazing that they started being so attractive to me when I was younger. And I totally would have gone out with them and married them and everything. And they weren't like, oh my gosh, you know, but it's because, oh my goodness, these people were just amazing, their hearts. And they just become so beautiful to you afterwards, you know? So that's why it's so important to not judge a book by its cover ever ever but we unfortunately we're human and we have eyes so that that's what my daughter says she's like well i have to be attracted i said but you're not you're missing the point they it become attractive yeah yeah they become later. attractive as you you know come to know them because she says i'm not marrying anyone unless they're in the catholic church i am tired of trying to tell Protestant things and this and that. She said, I'm not doing it anymore. So, but the point is, is that when people have a charismatic, um, if you, if you notice some of the most popular, um, and I can't think of one, um, celebrities that aren't that good looking, but they are made good looking by the way that they, move or the way that they whatever so that's a gift that god gives and it's sh and we should always use our gifts in the right ways and for our mission for god and just always remember that if you know someone with a charisma you need to tell them to use that gift properly in the right way tell them of course okay so what a man um how earnest how wise, how mild, how discerning we can pick up, you know, even though we already know Jesus to some degree, this gives us a tiny bit more insight, you know, about him. And she says, I can't perfectly comprehend his words, though I accept them with the thought he said it like she, you know, this is how these, these visions are there. It's hard you know, she has to pick through them and explain them in human terms. So, um, and that's what is sometimes confusing in her writing because she goes back and forth and all over the place in the timeline too. So she says, one cannot look them in the face. Well, what do they say about the Bible? We can't look someone in the, um, yes, it is guardian angel day. Uh, in the, and I was just, I, I just put up my reading and, um, so, uh, but, um, so one cannot look him in the face, just like the Bible says, you know, uh, he passed before, like in Genesis, he passed, he was in the cleft of the rock. You can't look at him. He passed and you can't look at him in the face. Remember we learned that in, I think it was the Jesus one, um, in our, one of our studies. And so he seems to read one's thoughts. Well, of course, he can read our thoughts right now. Um, and remember Silent Mary? Remember mm -hmm. Silent Mary didn't look at him because she and her soul saw beyond. She was not made of the earth. She was made to be like, she was so wise to the point that she wouldn't speak hardly. And that's why she was considered silent. She was considered dumb or whatever by people because of that. But yet she knew. 
she knew who he was and she wouldn't look at him. She was always, her gaze was always averted. Remember? Right. And, and you have to realize that simplicity never assume someone is a simpleton never assume someone who's homeless because they can't operate in this world is is uh, nothing they're just as valuable as the president of the united states as the kings of any time you know we we have to be careful judging as jeanette said a book by their cover so um even by how they behave so and the one that taught me that was Jesus. Mm -hmm. The one that taught us that because we, because I was taught by my mother, unfortunately, my mother, I love her. She's, she's such a blessing to me, but she's very materialistic. Her whole mm -hmm. life was, you know, about that. She wanted me to go out with people that were like, it didn't matter how old they were, whatever. It depends on how much money they had and where they would take me. Oh, She'd no. go out on my dates to the restaurants with these men that were like way older than me. And I'm like, gross. This is disgusting. I didn't like that. I I, I did the well, absolute uh, opposite at the end. But it's a cultural thing too, yes, to 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 escort someone on a date. No, no, no. She was doing it because she wanted the meal. Oh. And then she'd say she was cold and he'd because he wanted to look good to me, he would give her her sweater and she kept the sweater and she'd had it till today. And it says Dior on it, Christian Dior. And she, oh, yeah, it's different. What she was doing was different. But anyway, um, I'm saying this because I don't know why I, I kind of lost track. Well, no, but, but we're talking about <laughs> judging people on their judging people and and yeah judging a book by yeah but see jesus reading him and getting to know jesus and getting to know how we're supposed to be like christ and how he loved everybody how he came in this world humbly etc cetera, etc cetera, taught me he came poor for a reason yes he taught me mary the saints are teaching me daily on how to be and what i should what I said no to was correct. And I don't yes, feel yes. that about doing that. I don't feel like, oh my God, I disappointed my mother. I married Greg and he's very humble. You know, I mean, when he gave me my ring, she looked at the ring going, what? <laughs> well, you look, know, that's how Greg, she is. Greg is a wonderful husband. He's a perfect St. Joseph. So 30, 36 and look years how, later, and look, do you know how I'm many husbands? Do you know how many, how many years? 36. Do you know how many husbands would say, no, my mother-in-law is not moving in my house. Get her an apartment. Do you know what a good St. Joseph her husband is? Even her aunt lived with them. My aunt know. lived with us my all her life because never. she was unmarried and I'm an only child and I was like her child too. So I had like two mothers. So both of them, my aunt lived with me all her life. When I was married, she was living with us. And That's my true. mother later on when my, that's what uh, a good man greg is and what a good yeah. saint joseph he is yeah Give, he's again, the best. gave his last penny for his daughter's uh wedding that he worked so hard many years his last uh his uh what what was what's the account i forget the name of the account you know when you work i was in nursing you could do them too i forget the name of it but oh, um, the 401k. Yeah, the 401k. I don't know why. Yeah. I'm not a money yeah, person. Anyway, yeah, he's he's a great provider. But I'm just I saying, he takes every penny that he works for, yeah. works seven days a week for his family. She couldn't have asked for a better son-in-law. But the most important better. thing is he loved God. And right. I saw that before I married him. I saw that he loved God. His family loved God. He was from a family of eight very, very, very God-loving people. And so I said, I want that in my life. I don't want this other stuff. And that's where it all started. And little by little, I started getting closer to God. And I'm very happy. I would not change anything. I would do it all over again. So and that, anyway. that, is, that is the important thing about looking at someone. My mother used to say, um, you could tell by their shoes or this or that. No, you can't. You could tell by the the way they treat others if you're you know um my mom did tell me um in how someone treats a waitress uh who they have nothing to lose from 
is how you can judge a man too. And I agree with that. And I tell my daughter that I tell my daughter the things I think are important, but his, uh, his washboard abs. No, because they, they are often self idolizing these people that are building their bodies to be perfect. That's another self idolization. Anything when they accuse Catholics of worshiping idols, they're not looking at their own worshiping of celebrities of their own bodies. And even though it's important to keep your body healthy and all that, it's when you go overboard is when you're idolizing. When you, when you put that before God, when you put that before your family, when you put that before everything, you know, so that's where you have to be careful when you're judging others. Um, for uh, especially choosing a husband, choosing your friends. What's that thing Jeanette say with the rosaries? It says, choose friends who have these in their pockets. In their hands, yeah. In their hands. Choose friends that have the rosaries in their hands or their that are pockets. holding the uh, rosaries. Like they're holding God in their hearts. You choose godly people. You are who you hang around with. Even if you don't believe it, we are supposed to Spread the word to people that don't know God and that are in troubled areas. And your mom used to say that. But as we do that, we need to be careful because we need to not stay there and not be taken by those kind of people. Because if they don't want God, we need to wash the sand on our feet, dust it off and continue on. We can't stay there too long because we also could be drawn in. We got to be very careful. But at the same time, we need to understand that we need to be surrounded by godliness. We need to choose our friends wisely, right. our mm-hmm. life mates very wisely. That and we're our, TV watching, our, our TV what watching, our TV watching, yeah, all of what it. What we listen to, we need to have eyes that see and ears that hear only what God would approve of. And that's very and important. And Jeanette, your mother gave you some important advice. Yeah, she, she said, tell well, my me grandmother. My grandmother oh. always said to me, yeah, my grandmother was amazing. Oh, um, she, she said to me, um, tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. Because if you spend a lot of time with someone, you become a little bit like that person, believe it or not, you do yes. because they rub off on you. And that's only natural. We're human. So we need to always be guarded. Yep. And that, and that's why I, I, I tell my daughter all the time, I'm proud of you because, you know, when she moves on from a relationship, she's like, no, that's not what I want in my life. I don't like this or I don't like that. And I'm like, well, that's good because before you marry someone, you know, it's good to know their character. She said, I think it takes a good year to really know someone. And I agree. I don't think it takes two, one year. You usually know anyway. So, um, well, my uh, son, my son got married at four months because he had marriage in mind. And so did she. Gabby right. and Jonah, they had That's marriage. That's what Elizabeth in mind. said. I, I am and, not dating. Um, I got married days. at eight months, eight months yeah. after meeting Greg. I got married with right. him because he's like, you know, you were in my dream. We, you know, I love you. And I'm like, well, his parents didn't accept me. So we eloped. Right. He convinced me to elope and we eloped. So, Yeah. 36 years later, I'm, I love them, you know? Right. Yeah. So there's not, not hard, fast rules, but, um, she is like, I, uh, because certain relationships, she found out things too later. And I said, yeah, but you can, you can, t- you might in Catholicism, like my son always says, you're supposed to get married soon. Uh, because, because of the temptation about, you know, uh, sex before marriage and all that so yes you're right about that Jeanette um uh if you want sex marry quicker right date to marry don't date to have fun right a very smart person told me that just recently I'm not going to give names but oh my gosh what what a reality you date for marriage you don't date for fun well that's what comes to fun yeah, she went on a date uh, the other week or whatever, and um, they talked about all that. And I'm like, wow, you covered a lot. They didn't end up continuing to see each other, but um, but she's like, I am date, and and he was too. They both were. So and you know, and they were they're both Catholic. 
so you when you share beliefs like that and that is important so she said that i'm not dating anymore for fun i'm dating for that so anyway so uh one cannot look him in the face uh look at his figure how majestic they're like wow and the way he moves you could tell by the way someone moves there you know no undignified haste uh the mindful catholic that book i'm i'm reading oh my gosh Jeanette, you oh it's good is you it on audible or you gotta read it it's an audible oh lord oh i can hear it yeah i'll read it then <laughs> i don't like the to mind read books. Jeanette, it's the Mindful Catholic. Oh, you okay. need to hear this book and you need to do the exercises. There's like 10 exercises that you have okay. to do. So, okay. So he moves, he, he he journeys from place to place that he's not weary. That's what this Mindful Catholic is talking about. How not to be worn down by the, your worries and all that. He talks about how to do that. Um, always ready to start again in hours. What a man like they're just admiring him. And then they went on to speak of his childhood. This is interesting. His teaching at the temple and referred to the dangers on his first voyage when he had aided the sailors. Jeanette, what are they talking? What's he talking about here? What the, what's um, she talking about here? What, his what, what he, was his teaching in the temple and referred to the dangers attendant in his first voyage when he aided the sailors. When Jesus aided the sailors. Wasn't it when he was in the boat with um with with the disciples mm -hmm. and then it started getting getting tur turbulent and then he woke up and he told them not to worry and then he started walking on the water. Or was right. it when he was, no, because there was a time when he was walking toward them on the okay. water, right? Okay. So, it, so it must have yeah. been one of those two, because he right. did aid them with letting them know not to be afraid. Right. That, you know, don't be afraid. Right. And the troubled, the troubled waters there is like, um, kind of like to let us know that we're going to have troubled waters. And right. they're going to be hard times. There's many and, lessons in that. Yeah. And when do you, you know, when you get those hard times, during the hard times is when you really feel God's presence, not before and not after. Yes. It, but it's always during those troubled well, times that we feel the closest and we feel the most loved. And you know why? Because we're so desperate. And, and that's why I was talking about the guy with the, with the tattoos on his face. Yes. When you've seen evil, you suddenly know God in a yes. very poignant way. So, yes. you know, you see it because you that's struggle, what you, you know. have. So yes. everything in the world can't help you anymore. The world can't help you anymore. You're like, it's you and God and you're asking him. That's when you feel his presence the most because nothing else matters but what his will. And you're trying to ask him, please, if this is your will, help me here. And yeah, wow. and my mother, I noticed she she was she was doing yoga. Now my my brother had a stroke because of the drug he was using, and she uh, realized she was going. It was a Catholic hospital. And she would go down in the and and, and go to the chapel and pray, and she realized her yoga, because she thought her yoga was her like it was before that. She recognized she still strayed a little bit after she was so much into her yoga. She became a yoga teacher. It was still that pull. There's always that pull to the new age guys, that attractiveness, but it doesn't, when you're really in trouble, as Jeanette said, you're begging him and you're desperate. That's when you know. And that's why we can't judge a book by its cover with the tattoos because they've seen evil often with people. A lot of people that are, you know, they've done the wrong. Yeah. I have to, tattoos myself guys so i'm not against tattoos it's just that sometimes when they start going on the face and the head you're like no, kind of a little like okay and up the neck i'm like you have to be careful judge much. it yeah yeah because if they you see do, evil you do, and see? they repent remember yeah. everyone can repent mm -hmm. you know that's what this life is about we all we go to sin so you can't judge someone on their past sin no. and then they've repented. So listen to the words they say, the behavior they do. So 
again, it comes to that. So he aided the sailors. Not one of them dreamed he was speaking to the son of God. We never know who we're really speaking to. They saw he was greater than other men. They honored him, stood in all of them. Still, he was to them only a man. Just like the Jews never accepted Jesus. A man full of, um, why can't I say this anymore? Prodigies. 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 A man full of prodigies. They're like, oh, he's just a prodigy. No, he was so much more than that. So Obed of jerusalem he was a real old man and apparently was the <clears throat> was the fraternal um nephew of the husband of the old anna the prophetess another relationship we're learning a little bit about here he was a pious man one of the so-called elders a member of the sanhedrin he was also one of the secret disciples of jesus as long as he lived lent assistance to the community he saw that jesus was um was this pro he thought prodigy um but um and he was greater and they honored him and he helped him but he saw something else it sounds like i'm not sure if she's saying here um see because jeanette you notice she doesn't connect these two sentences this is the last sentence the last few sentences she she's saying that not one of them dreamed they were speaking to the son of god but then she talks about obed an old man he was a pious man, one of the elders of member of Sanhedrin. He was one of the secret disciples. So apparently, because even the disciples, I, they did, they it, maybe he was told as long as he lived, he said he led assistance. So I, she kind of doesn't make it clear here if he knew he was the son of God or he. Well, uh, he did at the end, at the end. At first he didn't because that's why he traveled with him. Remember, okay. he was asking him all these questions. Okay. And Jesus was answering them. There's like two chapters, two, two lessons that we learned two different days on just to his walk with him. So okay. it's like, he, it was very important for Jesus to make him understand all these questions. He, he had so many answers because he was very, he was a very um, esteemed priest. He was like really big in his community. So Jesus needed him to understand, to go back and to continue assisting the community with all of his answers, his questions answered. So he can also assist the people with answering the questions of Jesus. So he at the end knew who Jesus was. um, Okay, so that's what she's referring to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, so you guys... The, now we're moving on to John preaching penance for next reading, uh, which is what's today? Today's a Monday. So Friday, guys, make sure you come back because John leaves the desert and we're going to read all about that. And it's a really long one. So we better make sure we have plenty of time. Yes. Uh, oh, if we're doing Friday, how can we sew if we're doing all that? I we don't can know. do it early. We can do this early and then do we'll sew early. later okay okay so later yeah because i had to we had to cancel the last one because uh, i had a little family emergency thing so okay guys so this was a great reading i hope you got a lot out of it even though it was short there was a lot of very important things there that we learned you know yes yes it was very 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 good i enjoyed it yeah and we learned the themes don't judge a book by its cover no don't you know but but when you have a gift like a a um charismatic person you need to tell them they need to use their gift to bring god uh and and in a nice way you got to tell them that yes and we need to be also weary the opposite yeah like because one thing is not being that great looking and being able to be a beautiful person after you get to know that person like us we're not beautiful, but after you get to know us, we kind of we kind of stick to you guys, right? I used to be beautiful. You used to be beautiful, but everyone gets ugly when they get old, guys. So if you're marrying someone when you're young just because of their looks, remember that. We're gonna lose remember, it. We're remember all that 
Look, our eyes change. are sinking. I just, I noticed my hand. I got a big hole in my hand now. And my daughter's like, you're old now. And I'm like, It yeah. doesn't matter as long as we can get moving. Like I have bad knees. I mean, I can barely move. I know I need both knees replaced, but you no. know, it is what it is. We, we ride with it. Anyway, guys, um, be wary. I was going to say also the yeah. very beautiful. Yes. They mm -hmm. could be great people great people because a lot of the very beautiful carry the problem that also the opposite because they're so beautiful they get and they become idolized they become introverts and they, and then you have to and then and, you have you know, they you don't have friends them. they don't have friends because people don't want to friend them because they're afraid they're going to take away their boyfriends or whatever i used yeah. to have that problem i never had girlfriends i was very attractive when i was younger I was into modeling and all that, but because of that, I never had true friends until after I had my first child. My first girlfriend was Susie after I had Sabina. I've never had girlfriends. Every girlfriend that would approach me. And now me, you have thousands, me. hundreds. <laughs> now, because, you know, because I see well, it differently and I yeah. look for something different. I don't look right. for the... And you, you, know, also know, look, you also you know, know your husband. He's not going to be lured away and you know that. I'm still jealous, you know. I'm still like a little jealous. He is here and too. There. He is but, too. Oh, he's know, so funny when he gets jealous just, about Jeanette. Oh <laughs> my gosh, he's he he looks at her. He's like, oh, and the look that he gives her is hilarious. I mean, I almost fell on the floor laughing. How uh, he's so jealous about anyone with Jeanette. He loves his little Jeanette. Anyway, so but just be careful, guys, because a beautiful person can also have problems and feel sad. That's why they don't speak to you and you think they're conceited. They're not. They are just have their own things. But in the other way, you've got to be wary because a, the devil will come to you in beauty That's and what right. you love the most. That My is how son the used to say that. Comes. My you've son got to be used very to say careful. So when you, you see something you. beautiful, when you see something beautiful, you've got to ask the right questions. You've That's got to right. pray, pray that the Holy Spirit and not be blinded and not be blinded. See. The Holy Spirit has to guide you to see, and you need to pray for that, for yeah. that being able to see through through Jesus. Say, Lord, please help me see if this person is the person that is supposed to be for me. She's perfect, or he's perfect, and this and that. You know. Sometimes I think it's too perfect. Lord, you need to guide me. You need to help me through this because we're human. We need the help of God. And then there is for women, we've been told, I don't know, it was one of the saints or one of the priests. I can't remember. Sometimes the devil will come to a woman who's very compassionate. He will come as a little girl. He'll come to lure you and pretend to be a little that girl. That scares me. That scares me yes. the most because they say that an angel can also be disguised. Yes. Because the aid, because the you know Lucifer That's was a beautiful prayer, angel. That's why prayer. It's it scary. Will, you if you you cannot be if you say the rosary every day, you will not be pulled in the wrong direction. Just remember that. That's why the rosary is uh like my daughter-in-law took it with her to a certain thing that she went to because she sensed a lot of around her she had that for her protection she said and guess what it averted some of the yeah. negativity oh, it's important to to recognize if you're worried about being deceived if you're worried the rosary Yes. All right, guys. Yes. Bye. Love you. Bye.